Hi. So one of the things we do in a reading apprenticeship class is making the invisible visible. It's too easy to look at an experienced reader read, uh, even a challenging text, and think that comes too easily, or think that comes passively without active participation from the reader, and nothing could be further from the truth. Now, sometimes, after having read the text for many number of times, I don't have to think through that anymore. But even now, when I'm reading through a new physics textbook, I'm still going through this back and forth, asking myself if I agree with the author or if I think the author put particular concept into, um, into understandable right words. So uh, what I want you to do in this video was do a little demonstration of think out loud reading. Now this isn't how I actually read, this voice is too distracting. But what I'm trying to do is make the invisible visible so that you can hear, see the thought process that, um, that might go on in my head if uh, I'm reading this text for the first time. So this is out of chapter three, um, section 3.3, average and instantaneous acceleration. And let me read through one of these sections. Um, I guess I'll start out with the introductory text. Um, the importance of understanding acceleration spans our day-to-day -day experience, as well as the vast reaches of outer space and the tiny world of subatomic physics. In everyday conversation, to accelerate means to speed up. Applying the brake pedal causes a vehicle to slow down. We are familiar with the acceleration of our car, for example. The greater the acceleration, the greater the change in velocity over a given time. I think in the previous section, I remember reading about the velocity. So that's what that's trying to, I guess. Acceleration is widely seen in experimental physics. In linear particle acceler experiments, for example, subatomic particles are accelerated to very high velocities in collision experiments, which tell us information, uh, tell us experiments, okay, that's the right subject <laughs> verb agreement, information about the structure of the subatomic world as well as the origin of the universe. In space, cosmic rays are subatomic particles that have been accelerated to very high energies in supernovas, exploding massive stars and active galactic nuclei. Now, um, for some of these texts, I might kind of gloss over I, as I'm reading through. If it's my first time hearing about cosmic rays, all right. The, that's interesting, and then I'll just read on. Um, it's uh, so, so yeah. I'll, I guess as I'm reading through, I will point out where something in the text makes me slow down, makes me pay more attention, make sure I'm not glossing over and skipping over things. Yeah. So <laughs> let me continue. It is important to understand the processes that accelerate cosmic rays because these rays contain highly penetrating radiation that can damage electronics flown on spacecraft, for example. All right. Um, I guess one of the reasons I feel comfortable glossing over this introductory paragraph is because it's introductory paragraph. It's trying to pique your interest. And if your interest isn't piqued, well, it's not that big of a deal. Okay, average acceleration. The formal definition of acceleration is consistent with these notions just described, but is more inclusive. I see two words here, definition and described. And from my mathematical training, when I see the word definition, that's my cue that I have to pay close attention. Uh, in math and physics, we, uh, we physics, um, so I guess I'm trying to think of myself in the student role. Um, I'm acting. Um, 
I'm trained to look at definitions very carefully because a lot of thought goes into giving a definition that will always be true in every single imaginable circumstance. On the other hand, descriptions are not always that way. Descriptions um, are kind of like a rule of thumb or it's uh, something that is generally true, gives some um, context for us to, ho to hold on to, but you can usually find like counterexamples, things that will break simplistic descriptions. Um, there's that ten there's always going to be that tension in especially in physics class. Sometimes mathematicians, uh, do, anyways, <laughs> keep going. So this is definition of average acceleration. Average acceleration, average acceleration is the rate at which velocity changes. So I see this symbol here, A with the bar over it. So hopefully that feels familiar. And delta V over delta T. And it, this looks like delta V written out, delta T written out. Okay. I usually don't really pay attention to the equation numbers. Um, the reason they are numbered is so that later on in the text they can refer to it. So I will um, to scroll back up. Where A is average acceleration, V is velocity, and T is time. This is important because um, if I don't know what each of these symbols mean, um, then I'm, I would be lost. But these are fairly standard symbols. Oh, and they explain the bar. The bar over the A means average acceleration. Because acceleration is velocity in meters per second divided by time in seconds, the SI unit for acceleration are often abbreviated M slash S superscript 2. Or, as you know in your math class, uh, M divided by S squared. That is meters per second squared or meters per second per second. So this is uh, like an algebraic um, description. It's saying meter divided by second, divided one more time by second. Makes sense? This, oh yeah, I guess that's what the next sentence. <laughs> Sometimes when you are reading actively, uh, what you are thinking as you are reading through is <laughs> will be exactly what the author will get to. Uh, that's a good sign. Uh, if, you're to, if you notice that, then you are right on track. Um, so This literally means by how many meters per second the velocity changes every second. Recall that velocity is a vector. It has both magnitude and direction, which means that a change in velocity can be a change in magnitude or speed, but it can also be a change in direction. So if I'm just reading it right now, I might not have an exact context uh, uh, for what this exactly means. Um, I'll highlight that for now and um, see if uh, after having read it through the section, um, I'm given context for what they're talking about. For example, if a runner traveling at 10 kilometers per hour due east slows to a stop, reverses direction, and continues her run at 10 kilometers per hour due west, her velocity has changed as a result of the change in direction. Although the magnitude of the velocity is the same in both directions. Okay, I'm not sure if this is an example I would agree with because that change going on, the runner slowed down. So didn't the magnitude change? <laughs> um, well, that's the example the author brought up. Um, and. Um, and, you know, you don't have to, even in a physics textbook, uh, you don't have to agree with everything the author says. Maybe you think it could be put in a better way. Maybe later on they will give you a better example. Um, but um, it's okay to disagree with the author. It's okay to have points where you look at the text skeptically. That's good. You are reading actively. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> Thus, acceleration occurs when velocity changes in magnitude, an increase or decrease in speed, or in direction, or both. 
All right, I guess I'll move on. Um, but because um, I, I read through something like this many times, one way in which you can make a sense of this example is to think about average acceleration. So if you are just uh, thinking about, um, if you're just thinking about the um, average acceleration, and if uh, somehow ever acceleration were just to change in speed, then when you apply this definition of average acceleration, you'd come to the conclusion that over that entire time of the slowing down and speeding up in the other direction, over the entire duration of time, the change in speed is zero. So when you are looking at average acceleration, this example works like where from the beginning to the end, the speed didn't change on that, but the direction did change. So this is where it's important to remember that definition is something that's supposed to hold for all times. So if they had somehow defined average acceleration to only refer to the magnitude of velocity and not direction, then this would not be an example where there is an average acceleration, but there is. So, okay, let's continue. Um, acceleration as a vector. So, um, oh, I guess I should have, this box should have tipped me off that they are recapping something that they described in the paragraph. This can be useful sometimes when you're skimming through the textbook. <laughs> but um, yeah, so this is a good checkpoint. When, whenever you see box the material, it's a good checkpoint to make sure that what it says makes sense. Um, if not, then go back and reread the paragraph before um, or ask your think, pair, share partner um, what they thought. <laughs> Um, but these boxed materials are uh, boxed for emphasis, um, often be, and often they are sum summary. Acceleration is a vector. Acceleration is a vector in the same direction as the change emphasized in velocity, delta v. Okay, vector in the same direction as delta v. Okay, I wish there were a picture. <laughs> Since velocity is a vector, it can change in magnitude or in direction or both. Acceleration is, therefore, a change in speed or direction or both. Okay, that's like a summary of the previous paragraph. Keep in mind that although acceleration is in the direction of the change in velocity, it is not always in the direction of motion. When an object slows down, its acceleration is opposite to the direction of mo its motion. Although this is commonly referred to as deceleration, okay, figure, we say the train is accelerating in a direction opposite to its direction of motion. Okay, this is a very weird way to phrase something. Um, so, I guess the author must have a reason for high, um, using the weird phrasing. So the author point um, acknowledges that we do just call it deceleration usually, but he's also saying that we use this long phrase to say it's accelerating in the direction opposite to its direction of motion. All right, um, I hope there will be more. <laughs> Um, clarifying example later. Uh, this diagram does show what it means by opposite in direction. So if the train has the velocity this way, so the acceleration points in the opposite direction. And I guess if um, uh, we are looking at, let's see, acceleration is in the direction of the change in velocity. So this velocity, it, it, the train is slowing down, so it's getting shorter. So the change is in that direction. All right, let's keep going. Um, I usually skip captions. Sometimes it's helpful, sometimes, uh, but 
it took especially um, well <laughs> once you learn to identify different elements of a textbook then sometimes it's okay to skip usually the main text you don't want to skip because the part that you skipped could be detrimental to your understanding later on but captions figures sometimes equations <laughs> all right let's keep going the term deceleration can cause confusion in our analysis because it is not a vector and it does not point to a specific direction with respect to a coordinate system so we do not use it ah so that's why they were introducing this strange phrasing because they are now going to tell us that this nice one word description that they are not going to use because it causes confusion so just so that they can keep using the definition of acceleration the definition of acceleration which is always reliable can always be used they are going to go out to this trouble of using this very long confusing phrasing well not confusing phrasing <laughs> this very long complex phrasing which takes a while to digest but it is as uh, um, unambiguous as possible. It doesn't necessarily mean clear, but unambiguous does mean that there's only one way to understand it. Unlike a deceleration, which um, is an English word, it, it's subject to some misinterpretation. And one interpretation they're putting on is that deceleration um, that it's not a vector because it's real, always referring to slowing down and it doesn't really um, refer to any sense of direction. Okay, so let's keep going. Acceleration is a vector, so we must choose a, the appropriate sign for it in our chosen coordinate system. In the case of the train in above figure, um, acceleration is in, in the negative direction in the chosen coordinate system. So we say the train is undergoing negative acceleration. Okay. <laughs> if an object in motion has a velocity in the positive direction with respect to a chosen origin and it acquires a constant negative acceleration, the object eventually comes to a rest and reverses direction. If we wait long enough, the object passes through the origin going in the opposite direction. This is illustrated in the figure. So this one, I don't think I want to skip it. So I try to match up the description here with what I see in the figure. So this says the zero. So that's the initial velocity going in the positive east toward the direction. I see the negative acceleration. So that means this velocity is changing to the negative direction, to the left or west. So at some point the velocity comes to zero. And then acceleration, it says it's constant negative, so constantly to the west. So it keeps going west, west, west. And I guess this is what it ends up eventually. Um, I don't know if the positions are in the right, but well. No. In fact, I'm pretty sure the position is in my head. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes there's such a thing as thinking too much. Although, I think if you work, work out the kinematics here, um, so by the time it comes back to this position is when it should have this velocity, same magnitude pointing the opposite way. If it kept accelerating, this should actually be greater. Okay. Um, so, when a diagram is meant to be illustrative, um, you might want to slow down. Make sure you understand the diagram before you move on. Um, and um, yeah, that, so the staring at this diagram took as long as reading another one or two paragraphs. And that's, um, that, that'll be time uh, well spent uh, if you make sure you understood the key diagrams. Um, all right, so here's example 3.5. Now, oftentimes my first read through textbook, I skip the examples. Um, they, they can be a little bit too long and, well, 
Oftentimes I'll skip the examples. So this read through, I'm gonna skip the examples. And um, maybe I'll come back to it later. Uh, I'll see how much time I have. <laughs> so, okay, check your understanding. This is like a homework question. I also often skip those um, because it takes time. Instantaneous acceleration, that's a new topic. And I don't think I was gonna read through that for this demo. Uh, well, let me, let me go back to the example and read through the example. I think we, if uh, you're still with me, I think I have enough time to read through the example. Example 3.5, calculating average acceleration. A race horse leaves the gate. A race horse coming out of the gate accelerates from rest to a velocity of 15 meters per second due west in 1.8 seconds. What is its average acceleration? Mm. Okay, we are just given the definition of average acceleration. Change in velocity over change in time. So, um, from rest, 0 meters per second to 15 meters per second, so that's delta V. Um, in 1.8 seconds, so divide that, and I don't know if I can do that in my head. Uh, I don't know, something like a nine meter per second squared. Oh, and the direction, it's going from zero to due west, so the acceleration is also to the west. All right, I, I think that's what it's gonna be about. Um, and then let me uh, read through the, the solution given in the text. And um, this is what I would recommend that you try. When you read the example, slow down for a minute or two. Um, think through, um, is that something you can answer? And if you can, great, then you can check your answer. <laughs> um, and even if you can't, that time you spend thinking through it will, will help you absorb the material when you read through the work, uh, how, when you read through how the textbook works it out. All right, so let's see. Strategy. First, we draw a sketch. Oh, yeah, I probably should have done that. And assign a coordinate system to the problem. This is a simple problem, but it always helps to visualize it. Notice that we assign east as positive and west as negative. Okay, east as positive, west as negative. Good. Thus, in this case, we have a negative velocity. Okay, uh, oh, I see. So this is the initial velocity, final velocity. So I guess they decided the acceleration is going to be leftward or westward, and now they're trying to work it out. Okay, we can solve this problem by identifying delta V and delta T from the given information, and then calculating the average acceleration directly from the equation, the bar A, or average acceleration, is equal to delta V or over delta T. Hey, I recognize that definition. Um, so that's one thing that you will start to learn about the definitions, that they get used a lot um, in the textbook examples, in your homework. And um, sometimes I get students asking about if uh, on the exam, uh, we can you can use a cheat sheet or formula sheet. And uh, the place I'm hoping that you get to eventually is where um, you kind of will feel like you won't need that because the key information, like definitions, you have used it so often and so many times that you will have it memorized. Uh, and the formula sheet is just there as an insurance in case in the stressful exam scenario you kind of blank out for a bit. <laughs> but uh, most of the time, if you're not stressed out, it'll just be naturally memorized because you've used it so many times. Okay, um, so they're using that equation, so solution. And so that they outline the strategy here, makes sense. And the solution is where they go through all the details, plugging in numbers and any algebra necessary. First, identify the knowns. Okay, initial velocity from rest and the negative final velocity, the negative sign indicates direction towards the west and the change in time. 
Second, find the change in velocity. Since the horse is going from 0 to minus 15 meters per second, the change in velocity equals its final velocity. Oh, right. Oh, and th this is the formula or definition for change in velocity. Final minus initial, right? And initial was 0, so that's final, which is this. Okay. Last, substitute the known values, delta V and delta T. Hmm. They didn't work out. Oh, I guess they did write down delta T. Okay. And so for the unknown, average acceleration. Average acceleration is this combination of numbers. And oh, okay, minus 8.3, not 9. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. It, on the exams um, and homework, please use calculator. Um, <laughs> Okay, and so that's the answer as far as it goes. And you will see it in every one of these examples. They will, will have had a strategy, they'll have worked out the solution, and then they will slow down and discuss the significance. This is um, to learn any lessons, maybe conceptual lessons to be learned from here. And more than anything, it'll help you remember what the example was just about. Because it's really easy to get uh, bogged down in the details and forget what it was about. So the negative sign for acceleration indicates that acceleration is toward the west, an acceleration of 8.33. Right, right, right. Negative sign toward the west. Good. <laughs> east was positive. <laughs> so good. An acceleration of 8.33 meter per second squared. Um, so uh, I guess uh, sometimes I know this that uh, when I, as I'm reading through, it's sort of like I, my eyes moved over or I voiced it out. But sometimes, you know, you join out when you are reading and you realize you weren't really thinking it through when you are reading it. Uh, when you catch yourself doing that, it's okay to go back and reread it. That's the, one of the greatest thing about reading is that it's so easy to rewind. That um, you can reread the difficult passages as many times as you need to. Uh, so, um, so sometimes I catch myself doing that, especially with a dense technical reading like physics. Um, sometimes I'll have read through a whole page and then I can't quite remember what it was about, so I go back and read through it again. Sometimes, you know, I'm just tired, I need to take a break and come back to it later. Okay, uh, so an acceleration of 8.33 meter per second squared to due west means the horse increases its velocity by 8.33 meter per second due west each second hmm, increase. I guess that makes sense at least as long as horse is starting from rest. Um, that is 8.33 meters per second per second, which we write as 8.33 meter per second squared. This is truly an average acceleration because the ride is not smooth. We see later that an acceleration of this magnitude would require the rider to hang on with a force nearly equal to his weight. Huh, what are they talking about? We'll come back to it later. Okay, so that was the one subsection and you know, it take, took quite a bit of time. And um, so some of this uh, length of time is because I'm reading it out loud, I'm thinking out loud. So there's some additional time there. But it does come down to the fact that it takes time to uh, understand. It takes time to digest all this. And uh, when you are reading new material especially, you will need to take breaks. All these are cognitively intensive. And um, so, you know, I think I only read less than half a section. And um, before I edit this down, it was 30 minutes. and. If it takes you an hour or two to read it through a single section, that's fine. That's uh, sometimes how long it takes to read it through a dense material. So I highlighted a couple things. Uh, so I guess this will be to be uh, to come back to later. And um, I highlighted the one thing earlier, and I don't know if it ever got addressed. Let's see, what did I highlight? Um, I think. I highlighted something about acceleration, the direction of change in velocity. Mm, I remember not being satisfied with this example. Um, 
uh, it can also be a change in direction. So, so far this hasn't gotten addressed and um, I guess I'll just uh, have to read it through. I don't think in this section it actually gets addressed because they are mostly talking about one-dimensional motion. It's kind of easier to bring that up when it's two-dimensional motion. So this is one of the reasons I'm making available the um, Think Pair Share wiki page so that you can put up your questions there. Um, especially for sections that's not officially part of your think pair share assignment. Uh, sometimes I can tell you uh, when <laughs> it'll finally get addressed. Uh, sometimes, you know, you just have unanswered questions and it'll just uh, remain unanswered. Maybe it'll take the next semester's class to actually answer this. Although, um, for this thing about the velocity, uh, for this thing about, let's see, um, Um, for this thing about the change in velocity, also being able to be a change in direction, you are going to see that resolved in the later part of chapter 3 when they talk about, um, oh, sorry, later part of chapter 4 when they talk about motion in two and three dimensions, especially uniform circular motion. That's where even as an instantaneous acceleration, um, there's no change in speed, but there's cons well, there's continuous <laughs> change in the uh, direction of the velocity vector. So that'll eventually come up, and it'll be fun. <laughs> um, so so that's the real that's uh, why I'm trying out this reading apprenticeship stuff so that you have support structure to help you read it through the textbook, and the question there will. Um, there will be questions that come up, and I want you to have a forum where you can voice your questions, confusions, uh, anything that's actually unclear in the textbook, and either your peers can answer, um, or sometimes I will look and I will answer too. Uh, put that in your summary, then I can um, answer for the classes somewhere. So I think that's uh, long enough of a demo. Uh, I'll try to edit this down as much as I can. Uh, and until next time, bye.